February 6th meeting of Soquel Creek Water District. Uh, there's an announcement before we go to our normal business. Thank you. I just wanted to say that there's been some technology difficulties with getting into the IT room, so we have CTV in our audience filming on her phone right now. And then it's going to transition at some point, we hope. We hope so. Okay. All right. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. Do we need roll call with everybody here? Director Balboni? Here. Vice President Lather? Here. Director Lehue? Aye. Okay. Here. Director Christensen? Here. And President Jackie? Here. Okay. So, there's no, no public hearing. And this is an opportunity for board members to remove items from the consent agenda. Is there anything that you want removed? Um, yeah, actually, I just wanted a quick question. So I wanted to remove item 4.4, annual water production status report. Okay. We'll get to that at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Does anybody have a motion to move approval of the consent agenda minus 4.4? I'll second. Um, and we can just do a roll. We can just do a roll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. President Jackie, just a quick reminder, did we ask for public comment? No, we didn't. Thank you. Public comment. Sorry. I Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, then before you say something, I guess we should vote again after the public comment. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weston, for reminding um, President Jaffe. And thank you, Director Balboni, for polling item 4.4. Um, I want to say regarding item 4. Point, um, regarding the minutes, I think it's 4.1, there are, there's no video on your website so that people who were not able to attend can review that and verify that the minutes are correct. And in the minutes, you only say one comment or number of comments, but there's no way for members of the public to be able to go and find out what that was. So um, I wrote you about that this afternoon and requested that um, because there has been no video posted on your website since the December 5th meeting, that you instead post directly the community television government on demand website. It's very good and they update it right away. So um, it seems that staff is not able to regularly and quickly um, post these, these links to your website, send people to the community television government on demand website instead. I also um, feel that um, item number 4.5, uh, there should be some discussion about the Cunison Well Rehabilitation. That's a big deal, a $1 million project. And I believe that it is in part being funded by uh, grant money. Um, I would like to see a little more discussion about that. Item 4.9, um, putting out to bid to get a remodel of the center at the um, Pure Water SoCal project for a, a new education center. I think that because of the problems with the district's um, finances, you should not spend that money now. You've got uh, a very nice interpretive set up at the district offices. It could simply be moved and put there. Um, as an interim educational uh, display, and I feel it is irresponsible to go out and spend a lot of money on an uh, educational center remodel when you're trying to, uh, when you're having to raise the rates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. You should probably do that. That's the best way. Yes. So the, the motion was by Tom. 
and Rochelle is the second. So all in favor of passing the consent agenda items except for 4.4? 4. 4. 4. Yes. Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> None. I just wanted to say the what the motion was again. <laughs> yeah. Just a note, just in, as far as uh, Becky's question about um, Cunnison Lane, I mean, that was part of the well master plan and the EIR was done back in, um, I think, 10 years ago or more. So it's been planned and, and, and evaluated for quite some time. Dr. Lee, uh, with you and board members, I'll also note um, the Board meetings are broadcasted live on community television, their YouTube channel, and channel Charter Channel 25, and Charter Channel 71. <clears throat> These meetings are posted on the community television's YouTube website, as stated, usually that day or the next day. And there are links on our agenda to the community television YouTube website. Not only are they on our agenda, they're on our website at board meetings. So we and then, of course, we post them when it's appropriate at the uh, district website. I just want to acknowledge that there are direct links to community television YouTube website that was our meeting. All right, thank you, Ron. Okay, so that brings us to oral and written communications. So, is there any member of the public? Would like to address the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, a number of issues I'd like to address the board about. Um, Sorry, I didn't say any items on tonight's agenda, but you already know that. Thank you. Um, my name is Becky Steinbrenner. I, I read um, correspondence, and, and that's not on the agenda, but um, there. There are some very good letters there that I do hope you read. One from um, one ratepayer that is really upset that she has worked so hard to conserve water to the point that she uses only a little over one unit per month, and yet her rate, her bill is going to go up 45 percent. And she's she's begging you, and I'm sure there are others like her. I know her, um, asking you to reconsider this rate increase. I listened to the webinar that you ha uh, the district had. At no point did staff say to the customers who were raising very good questions that they can file written protest. And I ask that your staff change that policy of not making it clear to people that they have the option to protest. Otherwise, it's a done deal. and it, pretty much is anyway, because you have to get over 7,000 protests to change what your board has done already. So this is going to hurt a lot of people, a lot of people. And um, I ask you to reconsider. Um, I also want to say that um, I have uh, to question the truth of something that um, Mr. Duncan said in court it was filed as a declaration February 20th, 2019. And wherein he stated, and I am going to give this to you for the clerk, the bond requirement for liquidation of funds under Prop 1 is that qualified projects must be constructed and online by spring of 2023. The last date for disbursement of Prop 1 grant monies is February 29, 2020. Thus, all project work must be completed by February 29, 2020, or the district would be required to surrender the $50 million grant. Now, did you have to surrender the $50 million grant? Mr. Duncan said you'd have to, and this is a declaration under oath and filed in court. So, how is that fitting in with what your rate study is, and have has your staff been truthful? I want to, in the last moment, say that I attended the um, Santa Cruz City Water Commission meeting last night and heard a lot about ammonia treatment, and I have a lot of concerns about how the district is doing that at the O'Neill Well. Thank you. 
Any other public comment? I'd like to submit this. I'd, I'd just like to make a comment. Um, this, since I'm sure there's litigation involved here that we can't comment directly on, on, on your comment, Becky, but I wonder whether you're putting things in improper context and your timing is wrong. I just wonder. And to call our staff untruthful, I didn't. I take offense at that. I just I'm it. just saying I take offense at that. This is not a dialogue. You had your chance. I have my chance now. And I have found our staff to always be truthful. Okay, so anything from directors? Uh, yes, yeah, just really quickly. I wanted to um, report back on the flood control meeting that was uh, took place last Tuesday, January 30th. Um, we unanimously passed the draft for Santa Cruz County Flood Control and Water Conservation District, Zone 5. It was the draft storm drain master plan update. And um, just to clarify, Zone 5 goes from the Santa Cruz Harbor and then um, just to a little past New Brighton State Beach. It includes all of Capital Tola City. Um, the basic objective of this draft study was to identify capacity issues and project and project alternatives to mitigate flooding uh, on the regional system. And just also quick note that the funding has not been determined. So the county, city of Capitola and zone five will most likely gather more information before uh, implementation. Is that normal. <laughs> Any other directors? So re reports, there are no reports. That brings us to administrative business. There are no conditional and unconditional well serves. And there's a presentation now, 7.2. That's, you're gonna do that, Becca? We're a tag team. Okay. The three of us are tag teaming tonight. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, tonight on this item for the Communication and Outreach Annual Report, I'm joined by Becca Rubin, our Public Outreach Coordinator, and also Mackenzie Morris, our Communication Specialist. And we're going to go through a series of slides just to give an overview of the education and outreach that the district has performed in calendar year 2023. <clears throat> Just to kind of start off and uh, remind the board and those watching that the outreach team um, works with our community and our standing committees on the outreach activities that we um, perform for the community. And they're basically uh, formulated on three of the uh, standing committee's primary goals that were identified way back in 2016 when the initial public outreach standing committee was formed. And then to this day, they still seem to be the three tenants that we use to develop our communications and outreach plan. Number one is increased public understanding and awareness of the water supply problem and the comprehensive nature of the district's efforts and methods. And now I'm gonna turn it over. Good evening, directors. So um, this first slide, our district website, um, which is accessible to customers worldwide. Um, you can see our top five pages viewed over the past calendar year have been our homepage, pay your bill, bids, jobs, and the search module. And the top five search terms were bill, jobs, leaks, rebates, and rates. People spend about an average of a minute and 20 seconds on all of our pages. We have an average user of 3,700 people a month. And I find it interesting um, still that there's 63% um, on desktops and laptops, and tablets are really small, 2%, um, but more so on the phones. Um, Pure Water SoCal had just over 2,400 views this year. And then a fun fact that our furthest visitors were from India. We released five press releases this year. Throughout the year. 
We have a monthly advertisement that we do in the Aptos Times and the Capitol, so Cal Times. And this year we, um, or last year, we focused on um, Dr. Christensen's care theme that we started in um, our Water Wisdom column in January and carried that throughout the year. So collaboration, adaptation, resilience, and economics and environment. Times Publishing Group also has two um, magazines, well, one magazine that they publish twice a year, their Home and Garden magazine that we advertise in. And so this year we did Ditch Your Grass and Claim Your Rebate, and then also Stop the Drip and Save the Day and promoted our leak guide that uh, our department and water resources worked on to write together. <clears throat> our water wisdom columns that we have every month, um, which is Awesome. I, I hope you all read them. Uh, it's a nice way for us to get information out to our public in a different way. And there's, oh, I need glasses, I'm realizing. I can't see all the way over there. Um, at an event, a customer came up to um, Mackenzie and I and was like, I read all of your water wisdom articles. I learned a lot. It's nice to stay updated on what's going on in the district. So I read them all too. Thank you, Dr. So, and it's hard when, it, when it's print, right? We don't really know unless someone tells us, oh, I saw your ad or I read your article. We have really no analytics when it's print advertising or columns. Just one thing to note, to increase, I think, the broader readership of the Water Wisdom column is that we also run that in our monthly e-blast as well as put it on our website. Thank you, Melanie. And outreach just isn't in our department. The entire district does outreach. It doesn't matter if you're customer service or out in the field or managers. Everybody's out there doing um, outreach in some way. And so Water Smart, our customer portal, lives in our water resources department, but we work with them to also get that word out. And their staff is out always promoting it as well. So. We have 66% of our customers registered, which from what WaterSmalt tells us is really high. Um, so we're doing really well on registrations and we try to promote that as often as possible. And we have an 82% average open rate on those emails that are sent through WaterSmart, which is huge. I, I've never seen an email open rate that high before. Pretty cool. And we have about 3,500 average monthly visits. So we have people in on our on ongoing basis, we are always updating or coming up with new publications for our customers and putting them on our website. So just as um, a few of that we did this year, um, I think a highlight would be the ATU fact sheet as well as um, the new water service charges handout. We also updated our tour guide for um, our tours. This was a collaboration between customer service and outreach. And we worked together to replace the old bill backer that was on, on our bills. It was hard to read. It was, we heard from customers that was hard to understand. And so we worked really hard to look at what other water districts were doing and come up with a streamlined approach with the information that's important for customers um, out there. And so that got launched this year too. We also do something called a bill insert a couple times a year. And so it's a, I don't know what size, is a third of the sheet of eight and a half by 11 that gets inserted with the bills, or it's a link if you're an e-bill customer. And so these are front and backs. Um, we did two this year, the first one um, about the consumer confidence report, and then on the back side um, about the VWAP program. And then the second one was just all about the VWAP program, so the Low Income Water Assistance Program that the state of California does. And so we did that in English and Spanish. And now I'm gonna pass it to Mackenzie. Thank you, Becca. I uh, haven't used these mics before. Uh, good evening. Um, so another form of our outreach that we do is our district e-blasts, and we have two that we are consistent with. Um, one is quick steps, which goes to 
Um, as you can see, over 20,000 people, and we have an open rate of 50%. And just like that, our other um, e-blast goes out every Friday, and that has an open rate of 55%, which is actually really exceptional for most government agencies. Um, other government agencies are getting about like 28%. Um, so we're happy with that, very proud, and I feel like we're getting a good amount of information out to our public about your water SoCal and the district overall. And so we also have internal communications, um, hydration updations, which um, was accidentally released uh, to the Quick Sips group, but it was a happy mistake, I think, as Bob Ross would say. Um, but yeah, so hydration updations goes out once a month to our employees, and so a way for us to all keep in touch and understand the work that we're all doing and how we are really supporting the mission of the district. Um, and then Mega hosts our intranet, which is the big hub of all of our documents and resources that we need as employees. Uh, and then for social media, we are on a lot of different platforms. I'd say that we mostly use Instagram and Facebook, but we do have a presence on LinkedIn, um, X, which is old Twitter, uh, or new Twitter, <laughs> and then we have YouTube. And as you can see, we host like a, a variety of different um, social media themes and um, campaigns. And we've had a decent reach, and I think a lot of it also increased when we um, have different events going on. Um, people like to stay in touch and see what's going on. So that kind of leads me into our outreach programs. Um, one notable one was the Water Harvest Festival that happened in October. I would like to note that I raised $11,000 for this festival with sponsorship donations from my project partners and um, community organizations throughout Santa Cruz. Um, so their donations really allowed us to provide ample entertainment and the raffle prizes and all the different activities it was really a coming together of our community, um, and it was a wonderful day. We, at that event, we were also able to provide the pure water kombucha samples. Um, we had about 150 people try the kombucha that day, and we made that with Orange County Water District's uh, groundwater, well, purified recycled water. <laughs> um, and so hopefully one day we'll be able to do that and for other community events and tours, we stay very active. Um, I've gone to beach cleanups and uh, hosted different tours for the Pilar Soquel, but we've even had um, site tours of our wells and um, gone to career fairs. So we're very out and active in our community talking about all district functions. And then we have had a highlight of or an increase in Pure Water Soquel tours. Over the past year, we had 200, over 200 people attend our tours at the uh, Water Purification Center over on Chanticleer, and a whole host of different organizations and different industry professionals have attended. And then, oh yeah, right there. So we have also, obviously, Pure Water Soquel is a huge impact in our community, and so we want to make sure that everyone is consistently aware of what's going on. So we have construction outreach, which is one of those e-blasts I talked, talked about earlier that goes out weekly. Um, we also have a bi-weekly web page that we maintain for that. We've sent out postcards and letters. Um, I even go out to businesses talk to them, um, we do phone calls. Uh, so that's our construction outreach and generally overall for the outreach, it's web page maintenance, uh, more of those tours to actually like really get people connected with what's going on. And then we were just so lucky that BBC Storyworks wanted to uh, partner with us and, and share our story. So that was a huge lift. And then our water education program continues. Um, Becca and I both attended different um, 
schools. So Cabrillo and Soco High School were the main schools we spoke with in 2023. And then I think we're passing it back to Becca. Thanks, Mackenzie. So we have a very active water assembly program that we pay for. Um, we have four performers that we rotate through. Um, last year, because this is calendar year, it, we have two different um, calendar year, obviously school year goes through. So last year, school year 22-23, we had Rock Stud Steady Dug Juggling, and he was in that time period of 2023, he did two assemblies at two schools, but he did overall 10 for that this school year. And then they believe they're almost, they have, they have one more left to schedule. So a total of 16 that we put into the budget for this year, because we have 16 schools eligible for this program. And the teachers, principals really love it. It's a great way to, in the assemblies, they talk about watersheds, water recycling, how to protect our groundwater basins, and so it's, it's a great, fun, interactive program that they do with them and the children. I think one thing to note, um, we did have one of our assembly performers do a short video on the groundwater model, and I, I really find it enjoyable. Um, Becca, we should, we should, we can send that out to you if you want to check it out. Yeah. It is a good video. We also do presentations um, across the board to community groups, at conferences, um, at Capitola City Council, Santa Cruz City Councils. We're all over the place. And so this past year we did 13 specifically on Pure Water Soquel, and then just four generally on the district. And I think quite often we're, we get called and asked to do a presentation. So kind of because somebody's interested in, in wanting to share that information to their group. We also represent SoCal Creek Water District and several organizations. Um, Ron's on the Board of Directors for Water Reefs California, and as well as the Agua Water Utility Council. Um, Eileen eisner Streller, she's Vice President of Water Reuse Central Coast Chapter this year. Melanie is on the Capitola SoCal Chamber Board, and I'm the chair of the California Water Reuse Communications Collaborative. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you to Mackenzie and both to, to Becca as well. Just to kind of go over the, the outreach activities that we plan for and work into kind of our, our calendar of activities and events for outreach, but there's obviously things that don't always um, can be planned for, and in this case, this is an emergency communication. So last year, around this time, we were greatly impacted by the storms and the weather-related impacts to our community, and specifically, there was the March 10th um, main break at uh, North Main Street in Bates Creek that required a lot of communication and coordination with uh, the staff our, amongst ourselves, to our community, to county EOS, and so it was a very concerted effort. We do have emergency response plans and communication protocols that we do try to make sure we're following, especially in these kind of emergency situations. So similar to what occurred um, just about a month and a half ago, um, the outreach protocols that we did included, you know, maintaining up-to-date information on the website, um, doing outbound calls to customers that were affected, door hangers to those that are impacted, uh, information and communication signs um, on the streets, as well as trying to maintain an update of the presence on social media. We also respond to media inquiries, and as you can see, um, I love this picture that's captured here that somebody actually um, put a note to us that said thank you to County of Santa Cruz and Seville Creek Water District. This is, you know, just illustrating again, um, making sure that we have information available and we're accessible. Um, that is one of the things that I think Ron has always uh, managed to maintain with the managers is to be available and present when, when the media calls and, and to be responsive. One of the main things that we're working on currently, obviously, is the outreach um, to the rate study and the efforts related to the rate modification. So um, as we've been presenting over the last couple of months, 
um, supporting the activities related to the Prop 218 efforts. We've met and um, attended advisory committee meetings. Uh, we've worked with Raftelis and our staff on educational materials such as videos and handouts, uh, maintaining a website. We <clears throat> include the Prop 218 rate study efforts in our e-blast. Um, and then just most recently, we've been having webinars in our upcoming meeting um, and the open house. We also obviously put out the Prop 218 notice to all of our customers, and we're continuing to maintain that presence on all of our social media. As Becca mentioned, um, you know, the, the outreach activities, I think that Mackenzie, Becca, myself, the managers and the board, um, obviously um, really are that kind of front facing to, to many in terms of education and outreach but it, it happens at all levels and with every employee at the district. So just to highlight some of the things that we pointed out in our new and review video um, that we came to the board last month. Um, customer calls obviously come in and our customer service department um, educates our customers and answers questions. And last year we had, gosh, almost 2,600 hours of customer service support. We also still maintain um, WaterWise house calls and business calls last year. We had 17 site visits, which is less than normal, but a lot of that, I think, was kind of based upon still coming out of COVID um, when we weren't, you know, even going into homes. And our water resources department really changed their business model. And as you can see, well, there may be you know, 17 site visits, most of them still almost, you know, 100 to 200 phone calls and virtual consultations to customers to, to still help them in, in their lives. <clears throat> and then of course service orders, they're the direct customer interactions that um, our field staff do. Last year just under 4,800 service orders uh, were created that required customer attention um, from, our, from our field crews. So there is a lot of day-to-day -day interaction with customers. And then again, that kind of concludes our presentation, but I just wanted to reiterate what we've heard from so many people locally, as well as statewide, that the education and outreach program by the district is noticed. It has been a very positive impact. I feel like it really shows and has kind of created the district brand of information and accessibility, and um, we often get commended. We receive it, and we do try and share it, so I'm sure that um, we do hear a lot from people about our outreach, so thank you for your support on that. And now with that, um, we're open to questions. Okay, let's do this with clarifying questions first from the board, and then public comment, and then board comment. So uh, does anybody have any clarifying questions? I do. Um, I'll start with the most recent thing, service orders. So by that, is that <clears throat> when somebody has a leak or is that when you're actually, you know, installing a meter or what, what's included in that category? There's many things that could be, I think, identified as a type of service order. It could be when a customer calls and wants to have some, some issue identified, such as maybe low pressure, uh, something, their meters, you know, can't, they can't access their meter. Um, they have a question related to water quality. What's their water pressure? They, they, they may have just questions related to a potential leak. So it's when somebody calls in and they want somebody to come out, that creates a, a service order work tag. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question, I might have missed it, but the Water Academy, um, I, did I miss it? Was it presented or? So it, is that still alive? And I heard it was online. And it, are there many people t taking advantage of that? In a way, that's an outreach. It is, it is, and it's, we're planning to, we missed last year, we're planning to return it this year okay. and bring it back into person, like maybe a hybrid type version. Okay. 
Could you go to the page that shows the social media? I didn't quite understand what was being shown there. It might just be my poor vision. Um, yeah, so we have, I'll just go through what it says. So there, we have a number of posts on Instagram. We posted 58 times and on Facebook, we posted 70 and each of those posts give us a certain reach throughout the year. And so that reach means how many people interacted and viewed our content that was posted. And so you can see that, uh, on Instagram, about 18,000 people interacted with our posts and what we were sharing and on Facebook about 31,000. And then visits is a little different. So that is when you get someone looking directly at your um, homepage is a way to say it. So like um, if you have an Instagram, it's where you see your face at the top. Um, and so for our Instagram, we don't have as many visits. We have um, under 300. But on Facebook, we've had more than 2,000 people visit our SoCal Creek Water District homepage. And then followers on Instagram, we gained 45 in the year. And Facebook, you, we don't call them technically followers. They're people that like the page. But in, by liking the page, they follow your content. And so 25 people liked our page. New people, thank you. I, I, we think this seven is should not be there. So there's obviously four digits after the. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom knew that. <laughs> so, so that seems like a, a big reach to me. It is, am I, I don't know what to compare it to. I felt like it certainly increased over the past year. Um, I noticed a large part of our reach increased with the Water Harvest Festival. A lot of people were engaging with that content, especially um, because we had promoted different advertisements to get the word out. So that may have increased our um, overall reach and awareness of our district, but I think it's good. So there must be quite a few followers to have that type of reach. You're just showing the new followers. Just do you know roughly how many followers there are? Is it in the hundreds or? I would say for Instagram, I think we're like at 300. Okay. So I don't think that's significant for Instagram. Um, but for Facebook, I would say that we're um, just as, as followed as other agencies are in our area. So in the hundreds then? Oh, over hundreds, at least in the thousands for Facebook. Okay. But I would have to get back to you on that information. The world's changing. I think one of the things related to the reach is the ability for others to share content or tag us. And so if they have followers and we're tagged, then, then that increases that kind of exposure to a post. Um, I've noticed on like what Mackenzie was saying related to the Water Harvest Festival, when we would start uh, posting things, they would share it with their 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 um, groups or their followers. And so, if one of the project sponsors, like um, one of the nonprofit agencies that attended the Water Harvest Festival, tagged us, then it went to all of all of their group. And similarly, I think with with Instagram because you can use hashtags and you can do some of the other kind of um, catchy words, then it'll come up into people's feeds. So they don't necessarily go to our page, but they're seeing a post or they're seeing something that we've produced. Okay. And then the, the next two questions are probably related. Um, trends, you kind of show that there's an increase in followers in here, but in overall, trends in the outreach is it becoming um are more and more people being um becoming aware through our outreach and is the rate of change you know like from last year to this year and the other just kind of broad um what things should change if any
I feel we're sort of consistent in terms of followers. It's really hard to get people to follow um, a government agency or utility company. Um, I know when we've tried to ask people to, to follow us or like what would make you follow us, because we do try to, to get a little bit of those metrics to build upon. One person kind of said anecdotally, well, I don't, I don't follow people. I don't follow like pg e or I don't follow the green waste. And, and, I, and I'm like, oh, I get that, right? But I would go to green waste or I'd go to pg e when some, there's like a, maybe a rebate I know or power outage or I want to go to source of information. So I think people may know it's there, but they may not just become a member of our page or follow us. But I think that we still may be a source of information. I do think that with more collaboration that we've been doing with other regional partners and community groups and the ability that these platforms have to share, I think we're able to continue to utilize it. We learned early on, I think, when we did some of our initial community surveys and phone surveys, like what demographics and how they use their information. Social media wasn't really a high one. And we didn't really invest a lot in it, and we did more traditional means, but we are seeing the demographics of people utilize it more, and we're seeing that the tools have these features that we are seeing some increase in, I think, uh, knowledge transfer and knowledge sharing. And, and other things besides social media are, is outreach. Are there, you seeing things that are becoming more effective or less effective, the trends in it? Or is that a big, big question, maybe? Uh, and other than social media? Yeah. I think our water wisdom columns definitely reach a lot of people. We always hear about those. Um, I had someone come up to me and like, you look really familiar. And we tried to figure it out. It was because she saw my face in the paper <laughs> from that column. It's kind of funny. Um, I think Water Smart is now reaching a lot more customers. Um, like I think what I think was 82% are opening their emails. And so that's another way that we're reaching out to customers. And um, I actually had a meeting with Water Resources yesterday about how we could utilize that more so in the future and what that would look like. We also don't want to inundate people with email and have them unsubscribe and be like, you send me way too many emails, I'm going to unsubscribe from you. So it's a fine balance to, you know, to reach people. And so I think that's why we try over a bunch of different ways, quick sips, um, we didn't mention what's on tap, which gets mailed um, try, try, sem try, try semester three times a year. Uh -huh. um, and so we try to keep, you know, the paper for the folks that aren't on social media or aren't web savvy and don't feel comfortable going on online. Um, our newspaper ads is another way. I, I don't really know the reach on those. We, I could get that information from Times Publishing Group about how many people are subscribing. But I don't know, do you guys look at ads when you're looking at the paper? Probably sometimes if it's catchy and colorful, it catches your eye. I can, I can share on that. Diane on there. I can share in the past, like when we would run an ad in Aptos Times, I don't think I've shared this with you all, but you know, I would look and see where the rebate bump was. And it was eight to 10 people. So that was, that was kind of the push that we would get out of that. But that, that was like 15 years ago too. So they're doing a much better job. I also think that we've expanded like the different types of events we've going to like Mackenzie went to two beach cleanups this year at Sea Cliff Beach. And so that just gets a different demographic of people as well. And we brought the education trailer and she interacted with a lot of people. So we're trying to expand and try different things to, to reach everybody. Any other questions, mm -hmm. clarification, questions? I guess I'll, it, I'll open it up to public uh, comment. Any comments? Thank you for that report. My name is Becky Steinbrenner. I don't use social media, but I'm always interested in the results of that. And I think it's really great that you can um, get a better handle on how many people are looking at your information. I visit your website quite frequently for different reasons. And I, I noticed today that the header on it um, changes now and I think that's really a good thing. Uh, that's I, I did see something about the rate study there. 
and different things. So I think those sorts of things keep it fresh and interesting when people do come to the website. I also have signed up to receive the Pure Water SoCal construction updates, and I find those of interest. I know other people who have also, and they do it because they want to know where the traffic is going to be bad. It has really caused some horrendous traffic things. So um, that's that's been very good of you to put that out. Um, regarding the, the rate increase, I saw that that was also on your header. Um, I mean, the rate assistance, and I looked into that a bit. That's only a one-time assistance. I don't think that was um, made clear um, at a presentation. I also read the Times articles in the Aptos Times, and I'm very grateful to the Times editor for giving uh, the Water District that uh, half-page space for Ms. Rubin to write her articles, and they are interesting. I have a question about the school presentation. Who writes the content for what gets presented at the school presentations? You mentioned something about a, a video or something that was created, uh, because it's very important that while it's entertaining that it's um, educationally, uh, that it is accurate information being put out. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comments? Staff want to respond to anything? I'll, I'll just make an additional comment. Um, <clears throat> you know, what this, this small but mighty team does in outreach is magnificent for the, for the tools and the resources they have. You can see it from my chair. Um, I especially appreciate the way that you enhance the other departments. It's not just outreach. You do your own thing, but you leverage them. <clears throat> and to take it to another extent, I was thinking, how long ago was that? Well, my son's 23, he was 16, so seven years ago, I was at the DMV and helping him get his license. And our, oper our maintenance crew was out in the, in the road there <clears throat> exercising a valve. And my and my son said something. Look at look at those guys. They're working. You know, he was he was attracted by that. And that and the the lady at the DMV goes, yeah, and they're working really hard. It looks like SoCal Creek because the truck was parked there. My point of that is is that we try to everybody's an ambassador to some degree, whether you're communicating directly or just standing there, they're watching us. And so I feel like the district does a good job of that. And that was a moment of of proof to that, right? Every, every behavior, how we drive and everything, we try to, um, in some sense, make it, uh, you know, we're aware it's somehow um, we're relating to the public. So just thank y'all for all the work. All right. Any director comments? Oh, well, thank you. Actually, it's a great update. <laughs> I wanted to let you know I, I missed a lot of it this last year. So I really appreciate you seeing what I missed. And also, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see that video, too, just to see. But I could also reflect, a, you know, walk, I happen to walk around town, at least in Capitola, quite a bit every day. And uh, I see a lot of our workers out on, on calls, on doing things, and always very professional, I have to say. that They are, they are good ambassadors of mission. Maybe include them even in some of our posts. Comments or something. Because people know those guys. Sorry, Carl. Any other comments? I, I have one. Can you pull up the WaterSmart page again? I'm, I should have said something before you closed it. Amazing, 82% of people reading any email mm -hmm. um, in this day and age with everyone being bombarded by so many emails. So I think that's fantastic. Um, the 66% is great, but I will not be ha happy until it's 100%. I just want to say that, that it's such a powerful tool just to see what your water use is. And you can get down to the hourly water use. I can tell when uh, my daughter is back from college and taking long showers. <laughs> I, 
I can, I can, you know, I can tell a lot of things from it. And of course, leaks. If you can, you know, it saves, I'm sure it saved uh, the aquifer from having to produce more water because of leaks. But the uh, average monthly visits seem slow, you know. So that's people like me clicking on to see what their water use is. So I don't know what whether it seems low to, to other directors, or but I'd like to see that go up because I think really with, with awareness of how you're using water, you have power then to to change your habits if you want to, or at least be aware of, of what you're doing. And it's a great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I make a couple comments? Sure. Um, I can find out what other average monthly visits look like from WaterSmart, from other, other agencies. I can look up that number for you. Um, we also used WaterSmart to let all the customers know about the rate study in the open house coming up. Mm -hmm. Very, um, I believe it was last week. Um, and then our ad campaign this year is going to focus on staff and what we do to keep the district running. So the first one that um, Director Lucky you saw with Diane um, on the phone. So we'll have, you'll see a series of those every month with somebody else featured at the district and about their job. And then lastly, I was just going to respond to uh, Ms. Steinbrenner that we work directly with the performers on the content that they deliver to the schools. Yeah, you're welcome. I expected that. Um, and if, when you're at finding out what, how many visits uh, other agencies have, if there's an agency with, with more visits, maybe you could reach out to them and find out what they're doing, whether it's just a different, you know, demographic for their district or whether there's, there's some way they're promoting getting more visits. Of course, we'll do that. And I'll also add, we're constantly thinking, what can we do? So, for example... We know uh, as water rates potentially change and how does that impact other things such as our leak uh, policy and then does our leak policy play into this to try to encourage, you know, the, could the leak policy somehow be dependent upon you have to sign up for Water Smart? So we're constantly floating ideas like that. They haven't come to you yet, but we're, we're aware of your desire to increase it and the whole board's desire and our desire, right? Because it's, it's an amazing tool like to also just elaborate a little bit more on Ron uh, Duncan's uh, comment about uh, the little, the outreach group, the little outreach group that could, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, you know, I've been to a couple of meetings, uh, statewide meetings and talked to different agencies about what their actual budget is. And, you know, it, because it really is an important, um, especially with the changing um, nature of our water needs. You know, we have, what, 71% of all uh, uh, communities in the world have uh, depleted groundwater. This is a really serious, uh, a serious change that all water districts are facing to uh, provide sustainable and reliable water. So they spend a lot of effort. It's a serious effort, this outreach to, uh, especially in California, but their budgets are just dramatically higher. I just, I don't even want to go into how much it would, it would you know, if we had a budget like uh, Santa Clara Water District, it would just be, we'd be swimming in, in money. But uh, we do a lot, in the, and the team deserves a lot of credit for all that they've done over this last eight years. Just really impressive. Thank you. Right. Um, does a person have to be on Water Smart to get an alert for the water use? No. If there is a leak, they'll still get an email or a call. Yeah, one of my neighbors was concerned because her bill was like a hundred dollars more, and I said, "Well, maybe I should pay for something." She thought the rates had already gone up, and I was like, "No." And if they had, it probably wouldn't be that high because the next level <laughs> yeah. isn't. 
Yeah, we strive. I mean, based on our water resources does. If it's a if it's a big leak, it's the email, it's the telephone call, it's the go out there if we get no response, you know. Um, gauge it appropriately. We'll have to set her up on water smart and see what it looks like. Yeah. And she can call us too. We'll be glad to, to take care of it. But you know, I, I will gush on for one more moment because I know I talked about O and M and I just gotta do it. But when I, you know, I get the luxury of, of seeing things, you know, letters come to me, uh, things from customers, you know. Uh, so our water, our customer service office, you know, I walk by them every day. I talk to them every day. And sometimes when you, when you just sit there and listen to them, I mean, they are so empathetic. You know, they, they really listen. It's, it's, it's our, our people make that difference. You know, they do care. There is no doubt. And then the, the crew out back, underwater resources, going out, checking on the meters and leaks and that sort of thing. You know, of course, I've had the privilege to work with manage most of them when I was conservation manager. And they're passionate about what they do and the, and the comments you get back. So I think that's what makes us who we are. All right. Thank you. That brings us to 7.3, review and update of the special board assignment status report. That's you, right, Ron? Yeah, it's a, probably a combination of Emma, myself, and maybe Melanie will chime in. But this was an item. Uh, Dr. Jaffe, you as board president, I think in your quest to continually try to improve and f be more efficient, uh, asked for this item to, to come back. Uh, into for discussion because it's on once a month and what it is it's our assignments at the board somebody might say hey can we look into that and of course we put it on there you know what it is it's on the agenda for tonight uh under consent it was create i think what's important that maybe not all board members might not know it was created gosh 15 years ago i think there was a a question of were things slipping off or staying on, so it was a, a way to legitimize that that process, and that's been going on well since then. And uh, so it's brought to you tonight to see if there's anything the board would like done differently. From we don't need it to let's enhance it or frequency. I, I posed I think five questions there, uh, just to kind of get brainstorming going. So we're all ears. Okay, public comment. Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? I mean, I think it uh, should be on for a regular review of whether we want certain items to be kept on there or modified. And so I don't know if we, we see it, but we don't like have it as an item to say, to, to review, like I said, just so we can, because there's, some things on here we may not want to have on there anymore. So maybe something that you can discuss like twice a year, pull it off yeah, the consent every, and have it on the regular one for discussion yeah, like or something? Yeah, would be good. Maybe uh, if there's something you're considering removing instead of black, make it gray or something like that to make us aware that, that the staff thinks that it's no longer should be on there. Okay. I like the color scheme, you know, red for new items. Uh, mm -hmm. And the blue, I went back through an, an old minutes and there was a blue too. That was, what was the blue color used for? I, well, one color, I forget the colors. Uh, there's red and blue. One is to denote, uh, go ahead, Emma. <laughs> red is new items. Blue is to be deleted. So uh, we'll show it as blue and then bring it to you. And after the meeting is when we delete right. it. Okay. When it's been addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And you. You say how it was addressed. I remember now. Yeah. Like, so oh, here's an example up on the screen to give it to this because it's this item that we're talking about is also in the consent agenda. To be clear to the public. Right, so, right. And, and maybe go down, uh, Melanie. See if you see any blue. To, that, uh, there wasn't. Was any this time? Yeah. No. no. There was nothing that we accomplished that we're removing on this one. Just new item. Well, I mean, maybe the water audit. Validity score increase could have been in blue because that has been addressed. Right. Does the frequency? I'm I'm also interested. Do we? Does the board want to see it every month? Is that or do you want to see it more quarterly? We're going to keep it either way. But I almost wonder if it becomes like stale. We just kind of glaze over it if we bring it. You know. Well, it helps me. Okay. 
just because, you know, sometime between meetings, I, I forget what's been done at the last meeting, so it's re real helpful. Right. No, I think it. I think it, it serves a purpose to have it show up every board meeting, um, even if it's on the consent agenda. Uh, I'm one of those people who's a little bit slow on figuring out what this purpose of this was, and I was like, oh my gosh, someone board member mentioned something, and there it is. It's listed as a to-do item. I was really impressed, but I didn't really make the connection until fairly recently. Uh, so I really do think it does serve a, a way to collect and keep from forgetting things that have been said. And I say that was a really good system. Okay. I find it useful, and um, I think it should stay um, once a month. Okay. Yeah. And then review every six months is what I'm hearing. Pull yeah, out. so review every six months sounds wonderful. And then what would the process be of removing an item? I usually, you know, what, what you see on there is a date when it was assigned and a date when it's completed. And usually the date completed is when we discuss it um, at a board meeting. I think <clears throat> what's important to note is the board president has the authority to agendize board items. So the way I see this list and working is if any board member wants something on the agenda, we put it here and then we discuss it with the board president and all y'all come through that. So that's how, I mean, the official, when it, you know, we go and say, oh, we have time to work on it now and make sure that the board president um, deems it okay because they're the keeper of the agenda. Right, but uh, any board member can. We yeah, can any, any time a board member, we try to take note and, and put it okay. there and then validate it with the uh, board president. Gotcha. So would the time to remove an item that's no longer... Um, no, no longer perhaps needed or low priority. Would that be to pull the consent and item for this and then and then discuss it? Would that be we we could or at the six month interval. I mean, here we got the reserve list and and you know, like like the I think the name is the name change on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> after what we've seen go on about name changes, but more importantly, do we want to just um, just take it off? If you want to do a name change in the future, the board can always put it back on, but it's 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 ink, you know? Um, somebody teased me at a meeting. Um, they said they had seen our agenda and said they had a name to offer us. This was back when Cabrillo was thinking they were inferring it would be Cabrillo, you know, and, you know, jokingly. But the, that one, uh, I, I can't quite see him from here, but yeah, I mean, so the couple up there, I guess on, on the, from the point of view of uh, staff psyche, uh, I know like Shelly's like, uh, you know, we've contacted WaterSmart. They're really apprehensive about an app. Melanie was working with uh, Shelly. I think in some way you can make a website kind of look like an app. So we're kind of exploring that, which would get us in there. Um, so, you know, we'll probably bring that back to you and then hopefully we can take them off because it does, you know, I still think about that thermometer idea, which I think is number one up there, the health of the basin. There's just issues with it. But you've got other things on your plate. We do. We do. Yeah. I know that one. Well, that one, it seems like that's going to be obviated by the issue with your water soaked health. Right, right. But it could show it that, it, you know, I mean, I still think about it as a thermometer, like our collection of um, funds, and then it goes up. The problem is it do groundwater doesn't usually change that dramatically. So it's static. Do we, do we think basically the reserve list would be evaluated at these six-month intervals, and then we could bump it up or remove it? Yeah, so we'll bring it every month. It'll be on the consent every month, except for two months out of the year about six months apart, we'll bring it and put it in regular administrative business for further discussion. Okay. That's what I'm here. Does anybody want to make that motion, or do you need to I was motion? wondering, it, either way. Yeah, I'll make the motion. That way it'll be official, yeah. so so everybody yeah. clear on it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll second. Can we take off the name change? No, that's not, that's a separate item. This is just that we're going to see it once a month, and it's going to be oh. every six months. Okay. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so we have a closed session and we do have an agenda item, a consent item that was pulled. Uh, yes, so we so do. What's the, the normal? We do that uh, before closed session? Before closed session. Before. Okay. All right. Who is going to present on 4.4 or do you want to? Yeah, we'll have Nick Emmerich, our O&M manager, uh, come up and answer any questions. It's quite a um, great report. Um, I love the, the yearly status report. Nick put a lot of time into it. Um, yeah. 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 And it's interesting, right? It's it's about yeah. how the well is performing at its heart. Yeah. Great to keep up to date. <laughs> Good evening. Um, thanks, Nick. I, I really, uh, yeah, I, I thought the uh, report was awesome. I had a quick question on the chart on page 42 of the packet. There. Um, no, it, at the bottom right of the packet. You might not have it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the packet. I've got the report. Which, uh, which section of the report? It's table. It's a table. It says yeah, table, table one. one. Yeah, well and water treatment WTP maintenance summary. After the peak demand stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, yeah. It's um, it's under the last section called water treatment plant. There's a column titled last coating inspection, and all the wells say none or not applicable except for estates. And I, I understand that the coating inspection refers to the examination of the protective coatings um, that are applied to the well components and the casings, um, the screens, and other infrastructure. And um, obviously to ensure that they're, you know, uh, taken care of and effectively prevents corrosion. Um, but I just don't understand why it says none or, or NA. Yeah, so those are actually for the water treatment plant. Uh, facilities themselves so like the piping and the filters at the sites and you know it shouldn't it, it says none because I don't think these have ever been inspected officially they're inspected by staff on a daily basis um, we just replaced a large section of the uh, um, effluent piping at Garnet water treatment plant for example so um, there's not been an official analysis of the coatings of the inside of some of these filter vessels um, for the wells anytime that we pull a, a pump out of the ground anytime we pull the equipment up it's our policy to uh, video the well to do an inspection of the what's going on inside the well looking at the um, the screens and the, and the the status of the, the casing and making sure everything's intact and if there's any sign of um, something that needs to be repaired we address that as soon as possible because the wells are our backbone of the system so um, I can see that's a little confusing um, why you would why you would uh, assume that but yeah the uh, the casings are, are inspected any anytime we pull a well equipment okay thank you any other questions Okay, thank you. And we, sh we, sh yeah, good report. Uh, I guess we should open up for public comment for four point four only. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Becky Steinbrenner. Um, thank you again, Director Balboni, for pulling this. I think it's a, a very uh, comprehensive report, and really should be a separate agenda item like you've done for us tonight. Thank you. My, my questions um, have to do, uh, one of them with the O'Neill Ranch well and the problem of the um, ammonia treatment there. I referenced that a little bit earlier in my comment tonight about uh, what I learned with uh, at the Santa Cruz City Water Commission meeting last night, they are also seeing ammonia problems in their Bells 12 well, which is very close to the O'Neill Ranch well. And what they did was they brought in a, a 35 foot long by 10 feet diameter tank to treat um, water to increase contact time with chlorine to reduce the ammonia. 
And someone on the commission asked, uh, because they're familiar with the problem that your district has at the O'Neill Ranch, asked how it was how your district treated it, and it was said that um, the, the you essentially put in the chlorine, and it's expected that while it's in the transmission pipes, it is treated. So that um, I, I'd like some clarification from. Um, the gentleman that was here, is that really the treatment for the ammonia problem in the O'Neill Ranch? And, and if so, that would explain uh, frequent complaints that I hear from people in the SoCal Village area of very high chlorine in their water. Um, I also think that it's interesting, uh, the production on page uh, 39, showing your biggest producer is the Main Street well which is very much tied to the stream levels in SoCal Creek. I was uh, thankful to learn about the connection between Granite Way and T. Hopkins. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Any other public comments? Becky, I'd like to refer to, to a report that was done. Chloe Tom, I'm going to ask, when was that done that looked at um, the pumping in the O'Neill well and the water levels in SoCo 10 plus years ago. I'll, I'll get that information for you and you can look at the report and it does show that there's not a big connection at all, but you can evaluate that yourself. <clears throat> That's correct. But uh, I'll, I'll send that to you, Becky. <clears throat> I'll send you the report and then all right, um, is there nothing from staff on that? Nothing from directors? I guess we move into closed session. So before closed session, um, open it up for public comment. Thank you, um, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I'm a, a little confused. Um, the agenda that was printed out does not include reference to section 54957, but your online version of the agenda did. Um, and I copied that, just copied and pasted it from the website. So um, I was, I'm happy to see it isn't here because it has to do, when I looked up the government code 54957, it has to do with uh, security threats, so I'm glad I don't see that here, but I just want to point out that that code is on the um, the website's version. Um, at least that's what I copied and pasted. Um, I want to uh, just say that uh, I did receive notification regarding my uh, appeal in the 6th District Court of Appeal regarding uh, case 23CV02699 that uh, the 6th District Court of Appeal did uh, dismiss my appeal. And um, yet it, it states in here that the justices were uh, disturbed by some of the claims that defendants, your, uh, your attorney made um, regarding some of the, the issues, the legal issues. So at this point, I am planning to appeal it to the state Supreme Court. And um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would be willing to, to try to sit down at a table and talk about this. But um, there are many issues that need to be resolved yet. And um, I will be appealing that case. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comment on uh, closed session? Not a public comment, but I'd like to make a comment. Um, the board will be considering uh, on item 8.3 a litigation threat from John Cole related to the proposed water rate adjustment. I'll make right. that known. Thank you. I guess uh, we're going to con convene to closed session. And after closed session, we'll return to open session. I can't tell until we have closed session. <laughs> so.
Uh, we're going to ask uh, public members to leave while we have closed session. Thank you.